Time for Rewarding Moments in Redskins History, presented by the Maryland Lottery, My Lottery Rewards. I want to take you back to 1972. George Allen, the head coach of the Redskins, the Skins appear in their first Super Bowl ever. In 1971, after a great season, the Washington Redskins were defeated by the San Francisco 49ers in the playoffs. We, uh, we still got a hell of a lot to be thankful for. And uh, we're, all, we're all proud of you guys. We, we, made, we made too many mistakes to win. But I, but I know damn well that we're going to have a a championship football team next year. Washington Redskins of 1972. Some old, some new, some borrowed, but all true. True to their cause, to George Allen, their coach, and to each other. Each man is respected, but for different reasons. Each is a fighter in his own way. All of them are winners but none of them are strangers to hardship and disappointment. Hardship is not just a word to running back Larry Brown. Raised in the tough steel mill section of Pittsburgh, he learned all about its meaning as a child of the ghetto. The hardship of his youth hammered a toughness into his manhood. And today, Larry Brown is the most courageous runner in football. ended almost every game in pain. His legs swollen and bruised where tacklers had punished him for his boldness. But Larry Brown has worked hard to become a pro, and his body, like his spirit, is remarkably tough. He carried the ball more times per game, gained more yards than anyone in the NFC, and was named Player of the Year. Larry Brown is a born fighter who has met the challenges of both life and football and been victorious in both. Jack Pardee, number 32, is another redskin who knows about adversity. In 1964, he had cancer and was forced to give up football. But after a successful operation and after one year of determined exercise, he returned to play for George Allen in Los Angeles. When Allen came to Washington, Pardee came too. He is to Allen what Bart Starr was to Vince Lombardi in Green Bay, the coach's physical extension on the field. His intuitive and acquired knowledge of pro football is unequaled, and it seems as if his prairie-tough 36-year-old body has conquered age as well as disease. Hardship was never part of Sonny Jurgensen's life until 1972, when it consumed his career and shattered his dreams. In his nine years as a Redskin, 
Jurgensen set passing records that may never be matched. But what he wanted more than anything else was a championship. In the beginning of the season, he led Washington to three crucial victories, including a thrilling come-from-behind win over the Dallas Cowboys. But against the New York Giants, he tore his Achilles tendon and spent the rest of the year on crutches. Although he never realized his dream, he was still very much a part of the championship season. He instilled confidence in the offense and left with each man a renewed faith in the team. With Jurgensen gone, the Redskins looked to his replacement, Bill Kilmer, for leadership and inspiration. Kilmer seems to be too nice a fellow to be a demanding team leader but his career is a testimony to his toughness. In 1962, his legs were crushed in a nearly fatal car accident, and doctors told him that he would never play football again. A year later, Kilmer was back in uniform, but was just another journeyman quarterback until George Allen brought him to Washington in 1971. Kilmer will never be compared to Jurgensen as a pure passer but he has a sense of freshness and bravado which men are always eager to feel and to which they often respond. Receivers like Charlie Taylor and Jerry Smith, who once pulled in Sonny Jurgensen's pinpoint passes without breaking stride, now went all out to pull in Bill Kilmer's wobbly bombs. something about playing for the Redskins that brings out the best in a man. In the language of the sport, Roy Jefferson, number 80, is called a natural. Because of his instinctive skills, he's been a star on every team that he has ever played on. In spite of his individual brilliance, however, his potential as a team player remained undeveloped. But once a part of the Redskins, he contributed not only his considerable talents, but also a newborn enthusiasm and concern for his teammates. is another who found fulfillment in Washington. There was a time when he was a solitary, sullen man. His valuable skills as a defensive end were unappreciated by his coaches and teammates. In 1971, George Allen brought him to Washington. And now, he is no longer lost. He counts for something, and his contributions do not pass unnoticed. Perhaps here in Washington is something that all men search for, but only few find. Comradeship. The sharing of great things by men who respect each other and care for each other. Father, th there's so much that we want to thank you for. And it's really very hard to express it, but you, you've brought us a long way. Lord, help us to be thankful to each other. And Lord, thank you for allowing us to be part of a real community. Thanks for victory. By mid-season, one thing was perfectly clear in the nation's capital. 
George Allen was leading the Redskins to their first division title in 27 years. Just one thing, man. Play every play as a big play and keep coming on every play and we'll win. Yeah! Big plays became the trademark of the Redskins' special teams. They blocked five field goals and four punts. Thing. Keep your poise, but be physical, okay? Hard tackles are the trademark of the Redskin defense. A collection of dedicated pros who hit so hard and so often, only 218 points were scored against them. The lowest total in the NFC. Teamwork is also a trademark of the Redskin defense. On this pass interception by Chris Hamburger, watch number 41, Mike Bass, make the key block that opens the way to the end zone. Hamburger and Dyron Talbert, number 72, are the co-captains of the defense, and they award game balls to the defensive heroes of the day. Cornerback Pat Fisher, number 37, has won several game balls. And like so many of his teammates, he has succeeded in the face of adversity. At 5'9 and 170 pounds, Fisher is too small for his position. Yet he packs such intensity into every play and focuses his talent with such skill that he neutralizes men much larger and faster than himself. Fisher is a man of stamina and strong will, but so are all his teammates, remarkable men who made the Redskins a remarkable team. He doesn't swear, smoke, drink, or spit. His favorite beverage is milk. His favorite movie is The Sound of Music. And his middle name is Herbert. George Allen is so square, says a rival coach, that you could roll him on a Las Vegas craps table. Yet George Allen is a man for his time and certainly a man for his place. In 1972, his team won 11 games, more than any Redskin team in history. They finished in first place in the Eastern Division and earned the right to meet the Green Bay Packers in the playoffs. Allen assembled a group of strangers and taught them the meaning of togetherness. He brought in the disillusioned and the disaffected, the abandoned and the aged. He made them all winners and made football fun again. Three cheers for the Redskins. Hip, hip. On a dark, gloomy day in Washington, a big, brutal team from Green Bay comes to question the Redskins' path to the Super Bowl. The playoff game is a classic exercise in violence. Cramped and close and sometimes ugly. Packers are inspired, lusty, young, and eager. 
the championships are won by veterans, experienced, dogged fighters who know the dry mouth of pressure. Aware of the Packers' well-known reluctance to throw the ball, the Redskins put five men on the front line and chopped down Green Bay's big back. The Redskins crushed the heart of the Packer attack, forcing Green Bay to play the kind of a game Green Bay cannot win. a giant coming to life, the Washington offense begins to move. Beat them out their own game. You out, you out hit them. Now we bring those damn cowboys next. Hey, listen up. Gang, here's a ball for a guy that works real, real hard. And he's been in a lot of these games before. But it took a lot of cast offs, a bunch of redskins, and a hell of a good group of guys to get him his second one, coach. Go down! The Redskins' playoff victory set up another game with their old familiar enemy, the Dallas Cowboys. But this time, the championship of the National Conference would be at stake. Remember this, 40 men together can't lose, okay? In the early minutes of the championship game, the Cowboys seem to be the better team. But a football game is played on two levels, one visible, the other in the dirt, where each move is as vital as a heartbeat and just as invisible. In the man-to-man -man combat on the scrimmage line, the Cowboys surrender the initiative. The Dallas offense collapses, and quarterback Roger Staubach is no longer a factor. The Redskins' offensive line shuts off the Cowboy rush, and Bill Kilmer throws two touchdown passes to Charlie Taylor. With the score 17-3, the Dallas Cowboys suddenly become a middle-aged team. 
somehow past the point of eagerness and energy that made them champions the year before. Final gun on New Year's Eve, the Washington Redskins run off the field with George Herbert Allen on their shoulders. In Super Bowl VII, the same melodrama of championship football is played, but with a different ending. Another team carries off its coach as champion. The season is over, and the Super Bowl exists only in the record book. But the spirit and the togetherness of the Washington Redskins is shining still shining on proud, strong men, on good days of friendship and shared work. <laughs>